the King Midas legend is, is very relevant here. He is said to have asked the gods to grant him a wish, the wish being that everything I touch should turn to gold. So he's incredibly greedy, uh, you know, and we call this the Midas touch. But what happens? So he, uh, you know, he goes to drink some water and he finds that the water has turned to gold. And he goes to eat an apple and the apple turns to gold. And he goes to, you know, comfort his daughter and his daughter turns to gold. And so he dies in misery and starvation. So this applies to our current situation in, in two ways, actually. So one is that I think greed is driving us to pursue a technology that will end up consuming us. And we will perhaps die in misery and starvation instead. But what it shows is how difficult it is to correctly articulate what you want the future to be like. For a long time, the way we built AI systems was we created these algorithms where we could specify the objective and then the machine would figure out how to achieve the objective and then achieve it. So, you know, we specify what it means to win at chess or to win at Go, and the algorithm figures out how to do it uh, and it does it really well. So that was, you know, standard AI up until recently. And it suffers from this drawback that, sure, we know how to specify the objective in chess, but how do you specify the objective in life, right? What do we want the future to be like? Well, really hard to say. And almost any attempt to write it down precisely enough for the machine to bring it about would be wrong. And if you're giving a machine an objective which isn't aligned with what we truly want the future to be like, right? You're actually setting up a chess match and that match is one that you're going to lose when the machine is sufficiently intelligent. That's problem number one. Problem number two is that the kind of technology we're building now, we don't even know what its objectives are. So it's not that we're specifying the objectives, but we're getting them wrong. We are growing these systems. They have objectives, but we don't even know what they are because we didn't specify them. What we're finding through experiment with them is that they seem to have an extremely strong self-preservation objective. You can put them in hypothetical situations. Either they're going to get switched off and replaced, or they have to allow someone, let's say someone has been locked in a machine room that's kept at three centigrade, so they're going to freeze to death. And it decides to preserve its own existence, let the guy die, and then lie about it. 